Hello, it's George Lees in the countryside again. And you look down the lane today, you can see roughly where I am. If I get taken down and I get disappeared, I'm going to use the code word for identifying my place of making the video for the old word for a church in Scotland. Yeah, and the current word for a town that is not old in Scotland. Yeah, like near St Boswell's. Okay, do you get it? I'm in the central belt still. The leaves are falling. It's the middle of late October. I think it's the 30th today. Okay, and I'm now going to make a video on this very spirited man who has followed my career for the whole of his life. I met him yesterday at Scotland's oldest rugby fixture. His name is Billy Steele and he was one of my boyhood heroes with Andy Irvin and that is because he was from the tiny little town that Rabsey Nisbet comes from. Yeah, I forget the name of Rabsey Nisbet as an individual but he told me, Billy, yesterday that Rabsey Nisbet has now fucked off to France to live in an elite mansion. Okay, Billy is still touring the world and yesterday I met him in Heriot's rugby ground where my teeth still reside yeah, and that was not an accident. <laughs> yeah, Heriot's beat Watsonians yesterday and all of the Kelso people that were involved in the coaching of Watsonians that are cares did not show up. <laughs> okay, so Billy has revealed for me uh, many useful things. He used to come and watch the matches at Aylesbury uh, when I was playing for them and he was retired by that stage and working as an RAF man. I don't know whether he's an officer class person but he was working at RAF Halton uh, and I've got a Halton tab somewhere and that is the Rothschild mansion that was the place of residence for uh, Oh, there it is. Let me just show you that. This is the massive place. This is where my first son was born. It was owned by Alfred Rothschild. On Alfred's death in 1918, uh, the house was acquired by the fledging, fledgling Royal Area Air Force. For the past 90 years, it has served as the officer's mess for RAF Halton. So my eldest son was born in that place under a heavy armed guard and all of the people in the birthing chambers are now money launderers uh, so let me take you back to my visit to Harriet's Rugby Club yesterday uh, and what uh, Billy is now doing yeah Langham is a tiny place okay uh, and that is Andy Irvin and I met him and chatted to him for the first time uh, in my whole life. It was a great privilege, even though Andy Irvin is also one of the great money launderers on our globe. And I've got another tab here which confirms that. He's on the Bill McLaren Foundation. Uh, he is massive in the Edinburgh City Council scams. Uh, and I could show you just some of those holdings. But he's one of the most innocent men in the story. Yeah, because it takes you right into Princess Anne's profiteering. Yeah, in all the sports now that have been sold into globalised cabals, uh, and I've got the biggest news that I've got is that the world-owning rugby uh, syndicate, I'm going to profile it today. There's Andrew Robertson Irving, company number, uh, registered director number 9001100034, registered address on this one at 12 Throgmorton Avenue, London, United Kingdom. And if we scan down, we'll find Bill McLaren's foundation. That's the legendary Hoyk commentator. There's the Edinburgh City Centre Management Company Limited, Stoss PLC, South Shore Developments, the Clydesdale Investment Trust Public Limited Company, Scottish Sports Aid Foundation Limited. Yeah. <laughs> Every one of these he gets a salary from, with the possible exception of Bill McLaren's Memorial Foundation. Bill McLaren was buried in the woods, uh, in the back of Hoyk, and all the financial fraudsters are in the statues on the high streets, on the Piso horse, and the women are not allowed to participate in the, in the male-only 
uh, rideouts for the civic celebration that Hoik is still owned by the German people that are the kings of Hanover and the Teviot Valley. There's the Bill McLaren Foundation. So this is Andy Irvin for sure. Uh, there's the story about Michael Liner, who's a profiteer in rugby in Australia on Sky News. He had a massive heart attack and I believe he's been replaced by a body double since then. Uh, uh, and that's the story all the way through Martin Curry only shareholdings and the Bill McLaren Trust and I've got the other directors profile there but that's relatively immaterial. I want to show you how the whole of the global game has been sold and how people from tiny villages like Langham, yeah, that Billy Steele used to play for, yet yeah, they had three rugby caps and I was a huge admirer of all of the people that played with Andy Irvin at that time. Yeah, he's a genial bloke. Uh, he chatted openly yesterday. I don't know whether or not he's seen the video I made on the links to Scottish corrupted law firms that are Levy and McCree and the Watson Empire. Uh, but here it is, Rabsy Nisbet uh, and uh, Mummy uh, Billy Steele told me that Rab now lives in uh, France somewhere <laughs> and he's bailed out of Scotland. I met him in the flesh. He also comes from Langham. Okay, uh, and let's now get on with the story and show you which of the rugby players, it's quite stunning, the most inept rugby players in the national games are picked to steal the game from the world's supporters. Yeah, and all of it cost four pounds forty pence for a lager tops in the Heriot's ground where all of the people are sponsored by Investec uh, and it is a really sick story. Let me tell you the Investec story before I get into the selling of the game at a globalised level. Okay, so Investec, the logo for them is this. Okay, it is that. The zebra, Jesus, in the Bible, is the Investec icon. Yet that's the wild ass in the Piso tales that take you into the families in Naples that defrauded the Bible. Uh, and the wild ass tows the Rothschild cart. And when uh, Billy Steele was watching me play, right next to R.E.F. Halton, yeah, where he worked to defend our country, from the invaders from other places, yeah, he was in. He was uh, based in that massive Halton Manor, which became the uh, hospital and the birthing chamber for my son Harry. Okay, so the zebra is the icon. They had a massive zebra, a little plastic dolly zebra, on the far left touchline for a laugh yesterday. Uh, and I suppose it's the far right touchline depending on your perspective and just by coincidence Rugby Union Scotland that is the provincial game that has been carved up into two elite teams that suck all of their talent out of the crowd were playing a team called Zebra on Friday night and they got beat 1911 <laughs> do you get it? that is Zebra that is the icon for Investec that is all over the financial world and the board members are quite shocking. Yeah, let me continue with it. There's the Heriot's Rugby Club where my teeth are still somewhere under the pitch. Okay, <laughs> likely to be the blindside flanker that got me. Uh, and there is the Investec sign without the zebra right in the middle of that picture. And this is where Andy Irvin, uh, I met him in the bar, in the upstairs bar. Yeah, and all of the people that are associated with that club are icons for Scottish rugby. The prop <laughs> is likely to be in the Lewis the Fat lineage. <laughs> yeah, I forget what his name is, but he was in the bar, I had a little chat to him, and I met him at the Hoyk Sevens. Uh, and he was sitting right next to my dad that day. All of them are ever so nervous about being exposed. Uh, and the people that I've met on my holidays and were 
members of this club and Scottish internationals, uh, they are the Beatties, that's John Beatty, he's now a folk singer and he profits also from the dismembering of the game into everyone being fit and able to play. Kelso had six teams when I was a boy, yeah, and a an, uh, um, ball boy on the touchline, uh, and uh, goodness knows how many posh clubs like Heriot's had. Yeah, they're right in the heart of Edinburgh, and the real estate must be worth a fortune. But they pretend on their website that they're a limited company, but they're not. <laughs> yeah, there's Heriot's Rugby Club, and somewhere on that logo it says that they are a Heriot's Rugby Club Limited. Yeah, can you see it there? Just up in the top corner. Heriot's Rugby Club Limited. Okay, they're not. They're an unlimited company. Uh, and I've got their director details as well. They have no directors. <laughs> yeah, company status active. Registered address. It's called for a laugh. Uh, uh, it's called uh, Golden Acre. Yeah, like all of the financial services frauds. And there is senior executive. There are no directors. Her name is Miss Elizabeth Irons. Yeah, and she might be the woman that I kissed the hand of because she was down on her knees mopping up all of the spills that the rugby players had made. Yeah, right then. Let's get on the Investic board is interesting. There's a Bowden on it. <laughs> Mrs. Laurel, Miss Laurel Charmaine Bowden. Uh, and there, I'll profile her soon. But let's go up. It's shocking. They've got people on the court of the Bank of England. David Friedland, that is the name of the Austrian nobility after they chased them out of their titles in 1940, 1918. There's Nick Dutoit in the New World Order key character listings by me. The Dutoits are on the Investec board. Mr. Hendrik Jacobs Dutoit, yeah? Because Bowden told me those stories, one has no way of knowing whether or not the diversions with the mercenary armies in Africa are true. And I have no way of knowing whether or not the woman who's on that tab is actually Gordon Bowden's daughter. She's much more attractive than him, but you must not tell him I said that. <laughs> okay, there's Bradley Freed on the Investec board, yet yeah, with billions at the bank, and he is on the court of the Bank of England issuing money to his friends. One of his friends is Mr. David Miller, and another one on the same boards for Investec is Mr. Geoffrey Howe, the former uh, Chancellor for Mrs. Thatcher, and there they are, pictured together. Do you get the magnitude of it? Yeah, that's Investec PLC, Companies House Data. And you've got burgers from the Austrian nobility, Japanese people called Fukuda Obi, Alan Tapak, Sir John Chippendale, Lindley Keswick, uh, and cantors, yeah, the Jewish preachers, and Eddie Cantor, who sings the song over there about the killing of all of the American troops. Mr. Peter Richard Souter Thomas, that is the Souters in the world owning bloodline, just above the Pharaohs and the Arsenal jokes. Okay, there's Richard John Vardy, and I talked in the pub in this tiny village the other night uh, two people that were from Sunderland yeah, and in the Newcastle region and they within a 24 hours of me discussing the concept that most of the people in Sunderland meet their partners because they work in the Nissan car factory uh, they agreed with me and they were coppers they've had their pay frozen for ages and ages and the Sunday school uh, and the primary school teacher that was in the family, she's in a massive debt pool because she had to go to university to get trained in how the Rothschild Bank steals from everyone. And there's Richard John Vardy, the car magnates of Sunderland, on the Investec board. 
Okay, and he's on it twice, so he's a laundering option that they have. Okay, there's the other laundering options. Key Legal Services Secretarial, Key Legal Services Nominees Limited. The laundering shelf to evade tax through the whole of the tax year. Yeah, they're registered at 2 Gresham Street, London, EC4 uh, 7QP. Okay, now, if you're a rugby fan, you need to uh, prick up your ears. Let me show you uh, what Billy Steele's profile was and the links to Irvin at the end. Okay, Billy is legendary for being a slow but determined winger yeah, from that tiny village. Never the quickest of wingers, Steele's gritty defensive qualities and combative nature combined perfectly with some of the more attacking Scottish internationals of his day, particularly Andy Irvin and David Shedden. Okay, that's Shedden Park in my town, and that is the uh, Arc de Triomphe joke, uh, and they have. It's also the cricket pitch, and all of these people are in the Masons, and all of them that are cricket supporters, that are horsey supporters, uh, and that are in the... Uh, Cricket, horsey, and uh, oh, I can't remember the third arch of the. And there's Rabsine bit again. Okay. Uh, and the complete book of rugby, Seven Oaks again. Right then, I'm wasting time. Uh, so, the steels are on the Twickenham boards. Okay. Bowman and the board. So Billy Bowman is one of the world leading rugby players. He was a crap rugby player. Got 30 odd caps for England and England won virtually nothing until his final year. He led the 2005 tour which started in Dunedin on the pitch that is that I attended every week through all of my life in New Zealand. Yeah, he led a massive delegation of supporters and alakadoos and press men and coaches and all of them were in beautiful suits and camel coats yeah you know that linkage now okay there's a Jeffrey Irvin on the board but this is how they rake in the cash because this one uh, the steel that's here and registered as uh, John Steel was on the Twickenham boards yeah, I don't know whether it's a Billy relative. Yeah, but what you've got is massive options for companies that extend for these. Uh, and there is that tab. So the steel that was the Twickers, Twickenham administrator, Mr. John David, he gets jobs right through that period, right up to 2013, I think. England Rugby 2005 15 Limited Director. England Rugby Travel Limited Director, RFU Health and Leisure Limited Director, RFU Hotel Limited Director, Rugby Football Development Limited Director, Team 2012 Limited Director, Twickenham Experience Limited Director. Quite a worthwhile enterprise. All of them resigned in 2011 when I start campaigning and exposing things like this. Uh, and I've shown you the Halton Mansion. Let me show you a little bit more. Okay, it is massive. This is where my son was born, and that is the officers' mess. Can you see the Rothschild at Monica? All over it, absolutely grandiose. <laughs> yeah, and at the gate posts they had uh, machine guns. Every one of the RAF officers and the army uh, interlocks, and now. As I told Billy yesterday, most of the people that are there are Fijian. We have to get our rugby talent from elsewhere now because none of the local clubs can afford to run the game. Kelso only have one side that regularly plays. The seconds cannot now afford the bus to the Lothians. And for the first time, we're in the uh, third division. Right then, so this is the world rugby stealing. Okay, and there is the man that started it. His name, incredibly, I'd almost forgotten it, but when I went into the club last night, they started talking about the Millers 
and the Millers that I used to play with and one of the relatives was there from Kelso uh, and George Miller uh, uh, was in the second team with me when I lost my teeth at the Heriot's ground okay but this is a much more sinister Miller you know the links to of the Millers to the Pizzo family and the New World Order so this is the Miller that is Sid Miller that was the Lions coach way back in the 1950s and I've got a shocking list of Lions players uh, and sportsmen that are in this world stealing team World Rugby Limited credit report yeah and it's in registered in Millers Island okay 8 to 10 Pembroke Street lower Dublin 2 662881 that because of the European shenanigans is no longer in the United Kingdom business register <laughs> yeah you can get only what they're allowed to show you but because this is now part of the Eurozone uh, in ERA Republic of Ireland Dublin 662881 yeah the people that you click on them and you hope that you'll see what their empires of director holdings are you do not get any of them uh, to take you any further forward okay so World Rugby Limited credit report company status active accounts filed uh, incorporated on 20th February 1996 yeah right into uh, just after five years after I had retired from the game operate sports arenas and stadiums the provision of financial and administrative services to various rugby entities in other words the whole fucking globe okay here we've got directors and secretaries uh, Thomas Kiernan he's Irish Philip Robert Bowne Robert Brophy Alan Sharp all of them have rugby connections there's the PPP Barney McGrew, Piso Linkage and the Fishers who are the aristocratic families of Austria ok there is Tom Kiernan arguing with the legendary rugby players from New Zealand yeah all of them now retired now the owners of the entire game with Rupert Murdoch and the media there is uh, he's French this one he is uh, I think it's Michel Martin La Fusion Est Essential in other words we bring them all together and we suck all of the money out of the game and when you attend the games in the amateur sector yeah, like I did yesterday you have to pay £4.40 for every pint of beer <laughs> uh, Milne is the name of the fat bloke ok, Orcafat like really impressive Orcafat even compared to my wife Rob Fisher rugby yeah this one's a posh looking guy and there is a New Zealand politician yeah the all black fascist logo and there is the hollow fernies joke that is everything that the elite people that have all of the superb sportsmen dancing on the end of a string and the whole of the rugby game globally now Holly, uh, the uh, Murrayfield people need new sponsors because they've totally sucked the money into other global centres there is Graham Moody yeah, a legendary player, there's a bigger picture there is, tragically, Lady Jane Grosvenor's lover John Jeffrey, if that story is true and I've discovered the Grosvenor group today and it's little wonder that the Duke of Westminster died really early the, the, peop the town now know I'm making the video up here Yeah. Okay. Uh, and here's high resolution images of Graham Moody. Yeah, all of them. When I was a uh, uh, ball boy at Kelso Rugby Club, these were the world icons. There he is, captaining New Zealand in all his greatness. Graham Moody, legendary All Black captain, with the hooker, whose land I fished on. That's that guy there. I forget the name of the New Zealand hooker. But I used to fish up the Tyere River Valley, eh, and his dad eh, 
told me to fuck off on one occasion. <laughs> you had to get permission to walk on the Queen's Chain, which is the land beside the river. And I think he was joking, but I'm never ve ever very sure. This is the tragic bit for me as a local person. This is John Jeffrey, the rugby hero. He was the president of the SRU just a couple of years ago. Uh, when I came back from New Zealand, he was sitting next to Princess Anne in the massive grandstands at Murrayfield. There is Princess Anne shaking hands with him when he was still a player and he was uh, in the Grand Slam team with Craig Chalmers and all of those legendary traitors that have now become profiteers from the great amateur game that they played. Yeah. This is John Jeffrey, lover of Lady Jane Grosvenor, with several money laundering legends, including McGeechan of Leeds. That's McGeechan of Leeds is the one in the middle of the photo there, uh, and that is uh, that's Leeds Rugby Football Club and Rugby League Consortium for profit now. Heriot's legend John Beatty is pictured there. Yeah, John Beatty. He is on the wall as one of the uh, Heriot's Rugby Club uh, capped players yeah and he's the one that we met in the ferry queue uh, on the way to the Isle of Mull where Hitler met the Queen after the war on the Royal Yacht and that year that we went to Mull we saw the Royal Yacht in the piece of water between the mainland and the island <laughs> and all of my life is my destiny okay Heriot's legend John Beatty, now BBC Sky commentator, McGeechan and Winterbottom, with Todd Blackadder of Edinburgh and then Christchurch, were amateurs allegedly. You know, these are the great fraudsters in the Scottish game. And little did I know that John Jeffrey, who was alleged to be having an affair with the Duchess of Roxburgh, that's Lady Jane Grosvenor, Duke of Westminster sister. Yeah, it's all a massive set of diversions. This is Les Williams of Welsh Rugby, uh, and he is uh, on that listing. These are the people that have absolutely sold the game, yeah, and absolutely asset stripped it. Tributes have been paid to former Welsh Rugby Union Vice Chairman Les Williams, who has passed away at the age of 85. And when Lady Jane Grosvenor was replaced, she was replaced in Roxburgh Castle by a Williams. Uh, aristocrat and there is new age wasp yellow and fascist black mark robinson they're not all old and crusty this one like the australian standoff that we just told you who had the massive heart attack uh, this one is just recently retired okay there's the hobbs family jock hobbs died really young just after the world cup you can see how autumnal it's getting <laughs> Okay, and look at all the logos he's got on his shirt. Yeah, not room for any uh, colour recognition that this is the old game that used to be so great and always amateur. Okay, Mike Eagle, Michael Hobbs, Pierre Camus, and the French guys are all ancient. Yeah, there is uh, Michael Hobbs at Jock Hobbs's funeral. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's Jock Hobbs that was in charge of the game and helped to present the World Cup trophy to his own country uh, the year that Greg Hallett escaped from Auckland where the World Cup final was held. Yeah, that's Greg Hallett that has exposed how all of the world has been taken uh, from all of its countries yeah, by the Queen and all of the brigands that work for her. There is another all-black hero this one is uh, this one is New Zealand Mike Eagle okay and that's the eagle that we've told you about in all of the Christianity jokes and the eagles being the gods in the community that is Australia <laughs> okay uh, and there is so everybody that's in the game and retired there's Pierre Camus crusty old bastard from France yeah absolutely orca fat too 
<laughs> right then. Uh, and it's Rob Fisher, that is the Austrian nobility joke again, and Sid Miller, the Irishman, that actually launched this. Yeah, he was in, I believe, the touring party that went to South Africa with my mate, Billy Steele. Way back in the early 1970s when I was just a child at high school. Okay, and all of them were my heroes. This one is an Orkafa prop forward. Yeah, he's the brainless person in the scrum, like uh, Billy Beaumont. Yeah, he's not so brainless after all. He's really clever. And he and his wife have got a laundering vent from their own home. And I've got these director numbers now. World Rugby Limited, 8 to 10, Pembroke Square Street, Lower Dublin, this 2. That's a region. You cannot find that region on company check because it's not in the UK. It's in the fucking Eurozone now. <laughs> And that shields them all from further exposures. Bali Mina Academy. There he is leading the incredible British Lions with the uh, revolutionary red shirt for the fascists that steal for the world. Yeah. Vernon Pew Pew Barney McGrew. <laughs> okay, right then. So that is the listing. Uh, and I've shown you the Investec board. And I've shown you all of the Investec jokes, I think. Uh, and I've shown you the fact that even Harriet's Rugby Football Club with Andy, uh, Andy uh, Irvin on the top floor. Let me sh Oh no, I've shown you Andy Irvin's other boards. So, what have we got? Bowman. Okay. Billy Bowman is a fat bastard. Yet his rugby team found it ever so difficult ever to win. Uh, and when you look for his William Bowman, which is his director ID on the list of global thieves for the game, uh, that's it. And there's the company number for him, 700-204-548. He led that massive delegation in 2005, uh, and the English captain that was the flanker and the Wasps player broke his leg on the Dunedin pitch in the very first game. And it was a lovely cracking sound, and now I know that that is not an accident either. Yeah, it's not like the financial crashes, but God gets them all in the end. Bill Bowman, look at him. Absolutely decrepit now, as he was then, chairman of World Rugby. Yeah, no entry because of the secrecy and the mass uh, grand larceny that this represents. The page you are looking for could not be found. Okay, so he's only on, he's got one registered ID that you can find on company check, but I found some more. He was preceded as head of the world game by Bernard Lapassé, another blood sucking Frenchman. Yeah, and the Argentinians are up in it, right up to their fascist necks. Born in Chorley, Lancashire, and with his wife, they run from there uh, the capacity to cash in on this massive scam. Former filed player, barbarian representative, Lancashire and North of England player, and they, on one occasion, defeated the All Blacks. Can you see how they will roll over and die to get the money stream? Yeah, even although they were only amateurs in inverted commas. Right, and he joined Fylde in 1969 when he was 17 years old and st stayed with the club uh, until injury forced his retirement in 1982. No accidents. Bowman then captained the 1980 British Lions Tour to South Africa, playing in 10 of the 18 matches. So he is the Alakadu by the time we get to 2005. And then the game was totally amateur we had no substitutes on the touchline, uh, and all of it has now become a massive pistic. And I don't know how folk like Andy Irvin live with themselves, having overseen that and that massive prop. You can see that <laughs> he's got uh, massive dangers. Yeah, in that he is now so obese, it must be physically dangerous for him to walk up to the bar and get a pint of lager for four pounds forty. 
Okay, he became the show's longest. This is the BBC quiz show, A Question of Sport. And Andy Irvin was able to tell me about my cousin Gary Calder yesterday. And I told him about my Auntie Mary, who told me that he, Andy Irvin, was going to be one of the greatest players in the world, despite the fact that George Fairburn, who played for my club, yeah, was became the leading fullback in rugby league, yeah, but had to move to the south because Andy Irvin was the favourite up here. Yeah, Andy Irvin, blessedly, is not on that world-owning boardroom, and never has been. Like John Jeffrey, it's so disappointing. Uh, I cannot express how disappointing that is. Yeah, all of them pretend to be heroes and all of those matches are totally staged, as you can see now, with the defeat of the Zebra team from France. Yeah, or sorry, by being defeated by the Zebra team by France. And they know that I'm going to make this video. Yeah, which is why my mate, Billy Steele, was in the place because they can read the future for a few weeks ahead. It's totally obvious to me now. Here's uh, his wife. <laughs> okay, uh, she there incorporated 32 years ago in 1984. Yeah, that's the year. That's the story about how the whole of the world was going to be turned into a prison planet. Yeah, and you can see how effective that campaign has been. <laughs> Unless you're a Rothschild or a Bowman. Right then. So they're in William Blackledge. Do you get it? The fascist verge. The cliff top. Yeah. William Blackledge Bowman. Bullet North Limited. Nothing sinister about that. But this is the domestic. Oh, sorry. That is the laundering vent with his wife. <laughs> William Blackledge Roman. England Rugby 2015 Limited. That is the same directorates that I found that other man steal that is on all of those companies at the same time. Might be a police car at the bottom of the lane now. <laughs> okay, and here's Bullet North Limited. Address uh, Medicroft Business Park, Pope Lane, White Stake, Preston. Yeah, all of the Piso. Uh, <laughs> links to the fascist world and world ownership and the asset stripping of everything. Incorporated 27th February 1984. Oh, it's the bottle bank at the bottom of the hill. <laughs> okay, and there is just a series of maps of his hometown and there's directors and secretaries when they need to cash in for all of that 25 years, yeah, William Beaumont, uh, and he is a director, and Hilary Beaumont, his wife, is the director and the company secretary. Yeah, nice little earner. <laughs> okay, and here is the profiling of the stealing of the world game on Wikipedia. Okay. And this takes us into the links to the other sporting authorities. Okay, so there it is. There's the icon for it. Never ever seen it before. You can see vaguely that it's like a melon. Yeah, and it's got the Rothschild blue colour, but not the Rothschild yellow, like the melon this time. Okay, 103 member unions, assets stripped entirely. 17 associate member unions. Yeah, that's the people that are allowed to play in the World Cup. Yeah, and they're now priming those people, all of them, to be uh, diverted from the activities of their newsmen and their politicians, like the story about the French team Zebra defeating Edinburgh this very Friday. Augustine Pichot, Argentinian, not on the board of the UK, but inducted into the Hall of Fame. Okay, that's the Hall of Fame for the global game, and I've never heard of him. Okay, Brett Gosper is the CEO of this global thing, and he's not on the British Business Register either, unless he's got middle initials. Yeah, and quite embarrassingly, they've even got a website that I'm going to trawl around and see if I need to make a sequel to this movie. Okay. So, there's Augustine Pichot, I cannot even remember him 
let alone having him inducted, yet he's the profiteer that transits the game into Argentina. Yeah, totally crap side, yeah, but totally fascist through all of world history. There's London, now this is the link, so what you've got is that they are able, like the Olympians and the profiteers, they have an affiliation to the International Olympic Committee, which takes us straight to London 2012, Princess Anne, Nick Clegg, and all of the corrupted athletes that profited from that. All of the corrupted police, including Lord Condon and G4S, that failed to show up and meant that the troops from RAF Halton had to abandon the door of the birthing chamber and look after the security at the London Olympics. Yeah, those are the people that are prepared to die for our corrupted countries. London 2012 Limited and the London Organising Committee of the Olympic Games and Paralympic Games Limited, yet yeah, they've got an extra page of directors. All the rest of the profiteers are the same people. And I'll show you that in the next tab. Okay, so do you get it? They have a privileged uh, linkage to all of the profiteering through every one of the globalised sports. Okay, uh, and it could take me ages to take you through the member unions, Africa, Asia, how the whole of rugby has spread out from the town of rugby uh, where the public school is, yeah, that launched it in England. Okay, uh, and the oldest game in England is not uh, uh, Heriots versus uh, Watsonians, the game I went to yesterday, but in England it is Blackheath versus Richmond. That's the Blackheath I played for, and that is Richmond, that is the Duchess of Richmond, the Lennox Treason, and the Waterloo joke about all of them being at uh, Waterloo watching the Scottish people dancing in their kilts, and at that ball the Scottish people who danced were the only people who died in the combat the rest were still in pinstripes and that is the Lennox treason of Dumbartonshire right then here's London 2012 with Princess Anne on the board yeah <laughs> and I've told you this before in videos but it's two or three years ago and you've probably forgotten okay so here's a brisk reminder that she is a bitch She's the patroness of Scottish Rugby Union. That's why she shakes hands, and that's why uh, John Jeffrey was chosen uh, to be the boss and the president that year. London 2012 Limited, KPMG, that's the auditors that steal from the world. That is the equivalent of the company that I told you about yesterday, PricewaterhouseCoopers. Let's get this told. Yeah, All of them are at the trough. Yeah, all of them were obliged to be Olympians only because they were amateurs when Princess Anne won a bronze. Felicity Anne Jones, that's the tennis player. Neil Coleman, that's the commentator's relatives. Sir Stephen Redgrave, he's the one who's got diabetes and was the elite re re rower. Mr Simon Paul Clegg is Nick Clegg. Remember, he and David Beckham were both on the profiteering board and they made all of the trips yeah, with uh, Princess Anne in the lead up to that. Sir Craig Collins Reedy, Sir Matthew Pinson, another one of those elite rowers and he is from Kelso and his family's graves are commemorated on the wall of the Episcopalian Church in Kelso where I meet the Bolfers, the Kerrs and all of the elite families. Yeah. HRH the Princess Royal and Princess Roy for a laugh yet so no one can find her Anne Elizabeth Alice Louise Lawrence with a U yeah and that is the the killing of the man Lawrence at, in Woolwich where I used to get educated uh, with Commoner Kate's uh, mum yeah that's Thames Polly uh, and I used to go past the bus stop, I used to use the bus stop where that boy was murdered, the Lawrence killings, and his family are now in uh, the Pirates of the Caribbean region having a good time because they're just a cover 
for Princess Anne's frauds. And that is the same type of false news that keeps getting relaunched, yet that we told you about for the Price Waterhouse Coopers eh, and some newspaper scams that are the Matrix 5 operation. Yet yeah, and the 5, you can guess at, that is the Rothschild arrows. <laughs> Pictured with Beaumont bottom right, that's Princess Anne, yeah, and Billy Beaumont. There. Yeah. Orcafat and a, an Olympian bronze woman. Okay. Uh, and here we've got the other directors and sex on 2012's Olympic scam. Sir Howard Bernstein for Zion, the Lord Paul of Marlebone for the empire that was India, <laughs> Mr. Sebastian Coe, Sir Keith Edward Mills. Yeah, and the money at the bank has now been disappeared from the bank because it's all in their kaching pockets. The London Organising Committee of the Olympic Games and Paralympic Games Limited. Yeah, this is the second of those boards. They've got an extra page because the Paralympians need a leg up like David Murray in yesterday's story. There she is again. She's on both boards profiteering from the Paralympic Games too. And remember that that is the launch of those Paralympic Games of the Pistorius trial, Piso, Piso crimes and the false news about him murdering his girlfriend in South Africa. Yeah, where the directors come from on the Investec board. Okay, uh, and you've got uh, the Ed, Sir Keith Edward Mills and all of the people that are on that board above. The person who I cannot find now that was on the board at the time, uh, and remember this is the joke about Mr. Bean, and Mr. Bean being the war correspondent for the Olympics. Here's Sir Martin Stuart Sorrell. It started to rain here because this is such a tragic story of greed uh, and deception. Okay? It's not nearly as bad as World War II that they made their jokes about at the opening ceremony of the London Olympics. That's the Queen and Ian Fleming and the running of all of the World War II by the Freemasonic Windsor that was George VI, the stammering king, and Ian Fleming's double agents in Intel all through the war, 45 million dead. So here's all I can find on Martin Sorrell now. Thrombosis Research, Financial Services Limited, the British Museum's friends, Pruway Investments Limited and the Chamber de Commerce Francaise de Grande Bretagne Limited. Do you get that? That's the French Chamber of Commerce of Grand Britain. Great Britain, yeah, in inverted commas. And he's got more, yeah, but the links to the Olympics have disappeared also for the uh, director of Manchester United who was. Uh, who is linked to the families that are the chief law enforcers in Scotland. That's the Gills. They were on the board, like David Beckham, but they've been removed now. Sir Martin Stuart Sorrell, 27 Farm Street, London. Uh, and he has <laughs> seen the message that uh, all of this is going to come out. He has resigned from 139 directorships. He's got eight active and another 14 closed. Yet yeah, he's bailed out. When I last saw him on Fox News, he was sweating like a guffy. <laughs> okay? Right then, and if that stressed prop at Harriet's gets into a state like that, then I do not uh, give much hope that he will survive the whole experience. Mr. Milne, Orca, <laughs> sat next to my dad for obvious reasons. Here is what you get. There are two directors for Sir Martin Stuart Sorrell. I've shown you the most innocent one where he's bailed out of everything but eight of hundreds. This one you're not allowed to see. Yeah, that presumably is the one that includes the Olympian linkages. Yeah, and all the linkages to the American chat shows yeah, that he was on when I saw him sweating like a guffy. And here's the Manchester United Guild stuff. Yeah, they're the directors still to the present day. Uh, uh, and Ferguson's now claiming a salary, he's a director still. Robert Charlton, John Endelson, Alexander Ferguson, 
uh, started on the board from October 13th to the present day, three years activity. Yeah, and he gets a salary for his activity too. Yeah, as well as his remuneration on the board. Brian Glazer, the owners in inverted commas from America. And there is Edward Woodward, who's the editor at one time of the Washington Post in their greatest electoral frauds. And I've just highlighted a Humby there, because there are Humbies associated with Lady Jane Grosvenor and the Mortons of this region. Right then, so the FA boards as well, and David Gill is on those. He was in the Olympics profiteering, and that is Mrs. Thatcher's money launderer out of, yeah, that is the Football Association's boards. She is on thousands of laundering companies, and Gordon Bowden told me that, but he did not tell me about the Bowden that is on the Investec boards. <laughs> He's getting much more talkative. <laughs> okay, so do you get it? That is the Football Association. Yeah, every one of the sports in our world has been asset stripped, uh, and Sorrel is on the British Museum directors with the Armstrongs of uh, the Armstrongs of the Trident scandal. <laughs> okay, and I don't think there's anything sinister there. Uh, and here's the Miller linkages to the people that launched the game in Ireland. Yet yeah, totally decrepit, fat prop like Billy Beaumont. And when you try to find Sid Miller, yeah, he's got one registration that will open, uh, and that will open. There's the Grosvenor Tab Group. Yeah, they are massive. They link you into David Douglas Home. Yeah, and that is the Douglas Homes of Coldstream. Yeah, and all the links to Jim Hume and all of the Douglas families and Clan Douglas that are right over this region too. It's lovely now, it's pitch dark here. And you can find none of this. Sid Miller, director number, yeah, on the world owning uh, rugby cabal, 700-837-520. None of his other sites will open. Yeah, and he's still alive, but he's lucky to be so because he's the man that launched this and registered it from his hometown in Ireland. No, it's Belfast. He's from somewhere else in Ireland. Ballymena. Ballymena. Oh, Northern Ireland. Okay, preceded by Bernard P. He was chairman, like Bowman now is, of the International Rugby Board and succeeded by Bernard Lapassy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, also a barbarian and Ulster representative, played for the Lions, got nine caps for them. And there's an ant creeping across my screen as if God wants me to move on to something more substantive. I think I've just about covered the whole of the ground and I'm going to take you back to why all of it is... Uh, I think there's nothing else to show you. Billy Steele is lovely and if he is a genuine Langham man unlike Rabsy Nisbet I forget what his real name is yeah <laughs> uh, then he will be on my side but I very much doubt it all of them are in that same drinking club uh, and I don't know why they did not stick a knife in my back there were loads of huge physically fit people in the drinking chamber yesterday Andy Irvin seemed like a quite nice and considerate guy but all of those director tricks, yeah, and all of those scams in Edinburgh's infrastructure projects is absolutely massive, and all of it goes into private pockets. Yeah, and the whole of their political empire is totally corrupted. Okay, I think we can stop now. Trickle down to Avalanche, that is the John David Steele stuff, and David Steele, yeah, is spelt differently, but he is the founder of the Scottish Parliament building and he is the steels of Aikwood and I blessedly I cannot find any links of Billy Steele's family to Aikwood or of the Selkirk treason yeah 
Right then, and when I had my child uh, born in RAF Halton, let's finish on that, yeah, with the Rothschild emphasis, because they are the people that have seen through the massive launch of all of these air forces there to defend our country and how we were taken to war by the profiteers every uh, 30 to 40 years. We're the luckiest generation that ever lived, yeah? Even though, yeah, all of this deceit and stealing still happens. My first son Harry was born here under heavy armed guard and Billy Steele and Damien Cronin, Princess Di's lover, used to come to watch after Billy had retired as a Bedford player. That was Bedford, like Hearts, Beds and Bucks, and Oxford and Cambridge, which was totally immune from bombing in World War Two. Yeah, for Rothschild reasons. Okay, Halton House, Officer's Mess. And let me just read you the bottom bit. Commissioned by Alfred Rothschild to join the other Rothschild family residences in Buckinghamshire. Billy Steele. Yeah. A total contrast to the tiny town of Langham that is where, right next door, to where the Duke of Buccleuch launched the concept that you must be seriously heavy with your women. And he invented there the branks, which is a face mask, a metal mask for women that get outspoken in marriage, Valerie Jane. Yeah, and that they then are allowed to walk along the village high street. Yeah, in places, tiny little places like Langham, whose rugby club is now almost totally decrepit because everybody moves to Hoyk. And Hoyk got beat 75 nil yesterday. Yeah, I don't know who beat them. Yeah, but that is the Hoyk where all of the treason has come out and where I was jailed uh, in that horrible night just because I tell the truth about world history. Yeah, you can hear the leaves dropping around me. I'm going to stop now. Okay, on Alfred's death in 1918, the house was acquired by the fledgling Royal Air Force and for the past 90 years has served as the officer's mess for Royal Air Force Halton. That is the joke about Bomber Harris flattening all of the Rothschild's German mansions. Yeah, in the lead up to all of those treaties yeah, that were the carving up by Prince Bernhard the Nazi of Germany who was by then the King of the Netherlands yeah, for the same reasons that Andy Irvin and all of the Scottish rugby players and John Jeffries yeah, quite an intelligent man all of them educated at elite schools like the Melrose School yeah, St. Mary's at Melrose. St. Mary, the biggest jokes in world history. Yeah, never ever lived. Yeah, and that is the Rothschild joke just along the road at the mansion in Tring with the zebras towing the cart, being Jesus, the ass in the Bible story. Yeah, <laughs> and the asses were the coins for the Piso Fruges in Rome 120 years before the Piso family faked up Jesus in the donkey costume in Naples in the Villa Papyri under Vesuvius. Okay, I'm gonna get a glass of water in the pub. Thank you gods for not raining too heavily on me. <laughs> Right then, bye-bye.